Welcome, all my fellow Washington brethren and sisters. I am your man and resident Washington football fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. So we had our first formal interview from Eminem, as I like to call him, Marty Herney, uh, the new executive director of player personnel and GM Martin Mayhew. And we've heard from them before. I talked about this last week, very briefly. I didn't talk about it as much as I should have, uh, but heard from them last week at the Senior Bowl. Julie Donaldson had a one-on-one -on -one sit down. Well, I guess you can't call it one-on-one -on -one, as both of them were on that uh, conference call and interview with her. Uh, but she had a sit down with both of those guys as they were out in Mobile last week. But this was the formal interview. We talked that about them uh, once they got back from Mobile in the Senior Bowl, uh, that they were going to have this press conference and be available to the media and they could, you know, answer any questions that um, those guys were going and gals wanted to throw their way. And uh, they did that for over 53 minutes, Ron included in the discussion as well. So it was very informative. Uh, I think there were some things you could learn and glean from uh, what was said, uh, but I, we'll get to that in a second. Let me just start by saying this. Let's put this to bed. This, this is a very similar situation. I liken it to the situation last year with Kevin O'Connell when Ron Rivera first got here. We all wanted KOC to stay. I was included in that group that wanted KOC to stay, but I wasn't heartbroken when he ultimately didn't get the offensive coordinator job and it was um, given to uh, Scott Turner instead. Uh, it's a similar situation. We all wanted Kyle Smith here. You know, most of us, I can't speak for any of you out there. Let me retract that statement and say, I wanted Kyle Smith here. And I think a lot of you did as well. When I read a lot of the messages and a lot of the um, reaction from fans was, what are you guys doing? Kyle Smith did a tremendous job with free agency and the draft, and he's done a tremendous job with the draft. Over the years, he was one of the few holdovers from the last regime. And, you know, Ron has done a really good job of cleansing the entire building of anything that had the stench of Bruce Allen on it. And the last guy really in the building that had that stench on him was uh, Kyle Smith. And uh, he uh, parted ways with him uh, this offseason. And he brought in his own guys, guys that he was comfortable with. And you could see it in this interview, in this press conference, that there is a camaraderie. There is a very good relationship between the three of them uh, off the field and in the building. There is a really good working chemistry between the three of them. They get along very well. They said it at least 27 times in this presser. And so if you didn't know that they got along and that they um, work well together, they made sure they told you over and over and over and over and over and over again. But I just want to put that to bed. Kyle Smith is gone. He's not coming back. He's now in Atlanta. I wish him nothing but the best. I appreciate his contributions that he made while he was here. He left us some gifts. You know, a lot of these players that we are banking on helping us into the future, he was a part of the process to bring them here. And so I thanked him on Twitter when it was announced that he got the job in Atlanta. And I said, hey, man, until next time, thank you for your contributions. Really appreciate you, bro. And I hope he does well. I'm rooting for him. Hope he gets a GM job in the future. And then we can all lament how he was another one that got away from Washington. But until then, I wish him nothing but the best in Atlanta. So let's move on with the guys that are now here. Eminem, Marty and Martin. And you know what this, the big overarching theme for me, the biggest takeaway for me in this entire 53 minute expose, all right, was we got two GMs, man. This is a dual GM situation. Like, it felt like you were talking to GM A and GM B, you know, and, and you put them together and they form a super GM team, right? Uh, a tandem. And so they kept talking about how they're all going to formulate an opinion and Ron has the final say. So, you know, Martin Mayhew in particular talked about a coach-centric approach in San Francisco that he was a part of, that he got to watch firsthand. And he said it was beautiful to watch it because those guys were in sync. He said the synchronicity between John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan was fascinating to watch. And that's how it should be when you're in sync with one another. 
And so he's looking to, to you know, see this thing go as well as it did in San Francisco. He's like, we, they didn't always agree, but they were always on the same page. And he said, that's what they're looking to kind of build in uh, Washington. And there's a working history with Marty Herney and Ron Rivera. And then, you know, Martin Mayhew went out of his way to say, hey, I, I know Ron Rivera and for at least the last seven, eight years. We've been working on a committee together. So uh, we, we've got a, a working history with one another as well. So all these guys in some capacity knew each other beforehand. Um, Marty Herney knew um, Martin Mayhew from back in 89 when Mayhew was here as a Washington football team member. We've talked about that. He was a cornerback, a starting cornerback on this team uh, when they won the Super Bowl back in 91. Uh, and he was a big fixture of that secondary. So one of the greatest uh, NFL teams, not just Washington teams, NFL teams in history, that was a dominant Washington team back in 1991. Uh, and Mayhew was a part of that defense that w was at times smothering uh, in Washington. And so, um, I didn't really know this. I, I had heard this, but again, I, I wasn't really uh, that locked in and tuned in, but Marty Herney is from the area. He's from the DMV and, uh, he was working, um, uh, for the team in 89. And, and that's how he was able to run into Martin Mayhew the first time around. So, uh, they go way back. You're, you're talking over 30 years of history between those two men. So, um, there's a there's a lot of chemistry as I mentioned between the three of these guys, and I think that's what Ron ultimately was looking for was he was looking for an environment that was going to be comfortable for all parties involved, um, uh, you know, an environment where you would be comfortable enough with the guy next to you that if you don't agree on something, that you can find a way to come to one common goal and decision in, in terms of what ultimately is decided upon. You know, when you don't necessarily get along with the guy or you think this guy's coming for your job or there's any animosity, if I don't like you, you don't like me, or, you know, there's some kind of, you know, motive or ulterior motive or um, some kind of agenda that you think this other guy may have and you don't agree with something or he doesn't agree with something you're saying, then there could be a little bit of animosity and tension there. And, you know, with bringing in guys from the outside that Kyle Smith doesn't know, you don't really know how that's going to work. So he just kind of flushed everything, started anew with guys that he trusts, that he's comfortable with. And, you know, they continued to talk about, you know, what they're going to bring to the table and how ultimately it's going to be a collaborative effort. You know, they're going to suggest things to Ron, but at the end of the day, the final decision is Ron's. And they, they made that abundantly clear. And then Ron took it a step further to make it, very clear that he was going to take suggestions from them. He was going to be open to what they had to say in their input. So, you know, they tried to make it, it sounds again like this one big Washington, you know, they used to call it a Redskins decision when Bruce was here. Sounds like we're trending back towards that direction. You know, Bruce ultimately had the final say when he was here. Uh, they, they called it a Redskin decision. It really wasn't. It was really either Daniel Snyder or Bruce Allen making the decision. It sounds like Ron Rivera is really going to take the input of these two guys, Eminem, very seriously when uh, making decisions of, you know, regarding this roster, um, whether it be on the pro side of things with free agency, which is coming up, um, or the draft. And, um, you know, I think... When you look at it, if you really wanted to break this thing down into simpler terms, I think you could look at Marty Herney as more of the college side of things. And I think you could look at Martin Mayhew on more of the pro side of things. To me, it doesn't honestly matter at this point uh, because, again, Mayhew has the GM title. Herney is, to me, a co-GM. It feels like you've got two GMs. And, and at the end of the day, they got to take it to Ron Rivera and he has to okay the final decision. So um, this seems like a group effort. Uh, one of the biggest things that I took from what was actually said, the, the overarching theme, as I mentioned, is that we got two GMs essentially. But the biggest thing that I took away from this uh, whole conversation, because they just got here. So you can't really ask these guys too many questions and, and think you're going to get real answers because they just got here. They, they don't really know anything. Uh, but the biggest takeaway for me was 
when they were asked about the quarterback position. And Herney was the only one to bring up Taylor Heineke. Martin Mayhew didn't mention really either of the other quarterbacks. I think he did mention Kyle Smith and pa- uh, Kyle Allen in passing, but he only focused in on Alex Smith. So he's not even thinking about the other two guys. Herney, on the other hand, who worked with both Allen and Heineke in Carolina, uh, did mention Taylor Heineke's performance, which I thought bared mentioning by all three parties involved. He should have been brought up in terms of what he provided for this team in the playoffs to be thrusted into a situation like that and to perform the way that he did, I thought was outstanding. But uh, uh, Herney made sure to bring that up. Like Taylor Heineke, what he did can't be understated. That You can't overlook that. But, you know, they talked about not mortgaging the future to try and win now. And there's this fine line and this kind of tightrope act, balancing act that you have when you, you know, look for the quarterback that can lead you into the next decade. However, you want to also balance that and counteract that with winning now and not mortgaging the future. I thought Ron said something really important. He said, you know, you look at all these elite quarterbacks around the league and, and, and some of them, in the case of Matthew Stafford, haven't won a lot. And I brought this up and we're going to talk more about this on the Washington Football Report live um, tonight, later on. But I brought this up with, you know, a discussion that I had, and we'll talk about it more, you know, later on tonight. But I said, I I, I want the defense to be elite because, you know, with these quarterbacks, you got to have stuff around them. You know, if you got a Deshaun Watson or you got a – even Watson couldn't do it this year. You know, that's the thing. He's going to elevate on the offensive side – but you got to have the defensive talent. You got to have it on both sides. You can't have the cupboard be bare because you wanted to go out and get a, a, a franchise quarterback. And so he made sure he mentioned that. You know, you got to also have the pieces to build around them. And if you, you spend too many resources to get the guy, then you don't have anything to actually surround him with. That's key. Something else they talked about that I thought was important was that Ron said, look, we don't necessarily have a type that we're looking for, meaning a mobile guy, a pocket passer. We really don't care. We don't have a preference. We just want a guy that we feel like can get the job done. And and Mayhew and um, Marty Herney both talked about the kind of qualities that they're looking for in a quarterback. Essentially, they described everything Dwayne Haskins wasn't. So they pretty much made it abundantly clear that you've got to be a leader first and foremost. Yeah, uh, I think on the, you know, football acumen and, you know, football qualities uh, in terms of leadership and and intangibles make you kind of focus in on that. Marty Herney was like, yeah, all that shit is nice. You better have talent, you know, arm talent, size, all of that good stuff. You better have all of the, 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 the things that we need on the field. You know, you can be Chad Pennington all day long, and that's great. Great leader, uh, a guy that can galvanize, knows the, you know, commands the huddle, and knows where everybody's supposed to be cerebral. But if you got a pop gun arm, and you know what I mean, you got limited mobility, look, all that other shit is nice, but that doesn't help us when we get on the field. So, you know, you can see a little bit of, you know, a contrast there between the two when they start talking about, but I think they both agree. You, you got to have all of those things when, you, when you're talking about a franchise quarterback. But, you know, the the last thing I'm going to mention to you, and we'll talk more about this later on tonight. The last thing I want to mention was Ron Rivera and the shitty and grin he had on his face when Cam Newton was brought up. When they asked about the offseason and Cam Newton and, you know, Marty Herney, you, you drafted Cam Newton and you know about this guy, and you know um, he's out there. He's going to be available. Is that a guy you got you would consider? And, and Ron, you know, had this shit eating grin on his face. Like, you know, everything's on the table. You know, of course they're going to keep everything vague as they should. You know, they shouldn't show their hand as to what they're trying to do, whether it be going after a veteran or whatever the case may be. But he looked too happy to answer that question. That that worries me. I'm still sticking to my guns that Cam Newton's done and they recognize that and they're not going to bring his ass here. But, you know, when I see shit like that, it really makes me nervous. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll also say this. I think it is abundantly clear, and I've stated this on various shows. I'm going to say it again here because I don't know if you heard it or not. Ron and those guys, I think, have already decided. I think they've predetermined that 
the quarterback of the future not on the roster. I know a lot of you out there want to see Taylor Heineke get a chance or want to see Kyle Allen get an opportunity, primarily Taylor, Taylor Heineke. I think that's the guy that intrigues most of you. I don't think they are fascinated by either of those guys, um, Alex included. I think they understand that Alex is not a guy that can be trusted for 16 games. If they could get a healthy Alex Smith back, I think they would seriously consider him. But I think they understand that after watching Alex last year and, and the leg not really respond towards the end of the season, you can't go into a, 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 a season next year thinking that Alex Smith is going to give you 17 games. Remember, it's not going to be 16. It's going to be 17 games next season. I, I just, you, they, they're not foolish. They understand. I don't think they are comfortable with the quarterback position. And remember, none of these guys are on the roster right now except for Alex. You, you, Taylor Heineke nor Kyle Allen are under contract. Once the new league year hits, those guys are free agents. So um, they've got work to do. They've got decisions to make. Ultimately, I think they want to go in a different direction, and I think they want a veteran. I don't think they're looking for a young guy. And they may. Listening to Ron, it sounds like a guy like Matt Jones makes a ton of sense to them. We heard the, the report out there. I don't know if you guys heard this or not. And you know what? We'll get into that on, on the show later on tonight. I've said all I needed to say about this presser. It was a, it was a good press conference. Uh, again, not much to glean from the the, the two GMs, m and M, because they just got here. But I thought Ron dropped some nuggets. I thought those guys kind of gave us a little bit of uh, some insight into the way that they view the quarterback position and, and certain things on this roster. Uh, Marty Herney made it abundantly clear that defensively he likes to build on from the defensive line and then fan out. Um, and he said this line is already intact. He thinks they, that they're a few pieces away from really being elite, whereas uh, Martin Mayhew was like, yeah, you know, I think there's some work to be done on the back end. But, yeah, the defensive line is, is le as legit as it gets. So I, I think they recognize that there's some fine-tuning to do defensively, and obviously you got to find the quarterback. And so I think that was, you know, another takeaway from this presser. Uh, if you've got any big takeaways that I may have missed, leave it down in the comment section. Love to hear from you guys, and I hope to hear from you later on tonight. 8.30 p. for Washington Football Report Live. I am a Washington fan, etched in burgundy and gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, hail to our beloved Washington football team. I will see you guys later on tonight. If you haven't already done so, please do me a massive favor. And sub up the channel, okay? Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And also hit that like button on the way out. I'm your man, Louis T. Until next time, you guys take care. Have a good one.